generative AI uh, or large language models or foundation models as they're also called. Uh, definitely the technology of the moment. Um, this is a new generation of uh, machine learning products that can generate high quality uh, content like text, images and software code or from a, a single natural language text prompt. Um, if you are blissfully unaware of all of this and um, have managed to avoid all the uh, commentary and hot takes on LinkedIn over the last few months, um, the main products, uh, at least uh, as of today, um, are up on the slide here. Um, as of a couple of weeks ago, Anthropic's uh, text-to-text uh, model, Claude, can now analyze documents up to 75,000 words in length, which it is about the uh, length of a short novel like The Great Gatsby. Text-to-image models like Midjourney will create stunning image imagery for you in seconds that even a year ago you'd have needed a human illustrator or designer to create. And text-to-code models like Copilot, uh, GitHub's Copilot, will help your software development team um, write code faster and hopefully better. Um, these are revolutionary new products. Uh, they are incredibly useful and powerful tools. Um, and they are going to be, and generative AI is going to be, completely uh, ubiquitous um, very quickly, partly because these kinds of uh, products are going to be embedded in Microsoft Office and Google Workspace. Um, so, for example, just yesterday, Microsoft announced um, Windows Copilot, which is a kind of general purpose AI assistant that's going to be part of Windows 11 from next month onwards. Um, but also because there's this kind of uh, Cambrian explosion of products and services going on right now, a whole wave of uh, innovation that's coming towards us that's kind of already baked in and inevitable um, given the capabilities of the largest foundation models um, with more and more use cases um, and different kinds of deployments um, coming all the time. And for data protection lawyers like us, um, generative AI as a technology does present some complex and fascinating issues which we have been talking to um, some clients about. Um, but I'm actually not going to talk about those um, because the first question our team keeps getting asked by more and more clients about generative AI is this, or some variant of it. So I thought you might find it more practically useful if I talked about this um, today, even though it's, it's slightly off topic in terms, of, um, in terms of data protection. And some organizations have banned ChatGPT and, uh, and similar tools. So for example, some of the investment banks, um, Samsung and, uh, and Apple was uh, reported as, as, as having uh, a ban as well earlier this week. Um, so what is it that these organizations and some of the clients that we're talking to um, are worried about? Of course, um, the actual risk assessment is always specific to the client and to the sector, um, whether they're regulated and, uh, and so on. But in general, um, these are the risks that are kind of coming out and um, uh, clients want to talk to us about. So I'll go, th I'll, I'll go through most of them. So I think the, the sort of the, the, the big obvious kind of um, one at the top of the list is, is, is confidentiality. Um, the submission of commercially sensitive or, or confidential information by employees to ChatGPT and, and similar tools, um, particularly where the information may be used by the provider of the model to fine tune or further train it, um, could infringe commitments or, or obligations relating to confidential information. Um, or affect the status of documents that rely on confidentiality like, um, like privileged documents. Um, and don't think of this just in terms of documents um, or indeed prompts either. Um, so transcripts of video calls and, uh, and meetings is shaping up to be another major use case. It's, it's trivially easy now to um, uh, convert an audio file of a long call or meeting into a very accurate written transcript 
um, which can then be uploaded to the model for analysis and, and summary and so on. So, you know, combined with the very long context window that I, I just mentioned that's coming in, in, in Claude and there are similar uh, context windows coming, bigger context windows coming in the other large language models. Um, you know, this is going to be a very kind of compelling and appealing use case for a lot of, a lot of employees. So privacy risks, um, kind of similar point, the uploading of personal information um, in documents or prompts to text to text models um, for analysis uh, is, is another big risk. I'm thinking particularly use by HR teams to analyse resumes and similar, um, which may be a type of disclosure and processing activity that isn't contemplated by your existing privacy policy um, or notice. And then the I IPR risks, I mean, most prominently in relation to uh, the image, uh, the text image model, sorry. Um, so uh, like Sable Diffusion or, 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 or Mid Journey, um, there's an initial kind of approximate question of what the terms and conditions of the service say about ownership. Um, often there are different uh, ownership uh, membership tiers um, with, with the product with only the highest tier giving you the full assignment of, of IPRs that you might expect in a, in a kind of normal commercial IP license. And then there's the, uh, the slightly more difficult underlying question of whether the generated image is protected by copyright um, at all. Um, and you have to be you know, aware that uh, there may in fact not be, as a matter of copyright law, um, uh, any copyright uh, in, in, in the image. That's certainly the direction that US law seems to be going in at the moment. Uh, flawed code is, is um, a particularly big one for uh, technology clients, and I think that's what's driven uh, the ban by, um, by, by, by Apple this week. Um, so uh, here, uh, it's not just that uh, the IP risk of uploading proprietary code into the, into the model to have the model analyze it or suggest improvements to it. There's also the risk of the model uh, generating um, code that executes, but nevertheless has some kind of underlying deficiency in it um, that, that needs to be uh, addressed further further down the line. And then there's inaccurate information, which uh, again I think is a big risk, uh, particularly for enterprise use cases. So text-to-text -text models like, like Claude and, and, and ChatGPT um, are designed to produce plausible and coherent grammatically correct text, not factually correct text. Uh, and these uh, uh, these errors, these so-called hallucinations, are a real potential hazard for enterprise customers, um, as they'll often be very hard to spot intermingled with, with correct information. So you could find yourself in a situation where you've got employees uh, relying on um, hard to spot, uh, on relying on documents or arguments or strategies and information that's got very hard to spot errors that's kind of intermingled with, um, with correct uh, c correct information. And so the kind of solution that we are uh, looking at and advising on is an employee facing um, acceptable use policy uh, of some kind that either is separate to um, the existing employee policies or, 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 or builds on, it, on the existing one. Um, and it'll have some of the following ingredients. Um, so you may want to prohibit upload of sensitive or, or, or confidential information and of personal data um, altogether. So a kind of limited ban, if you can uh, uh, sort of trust your organization, trust your, your employees to, um, uh, to, uh, to manage that. Um, you might consider building a whitelist of approved products, um, uh, each of which has a corporate account. So I'm dealing with the risk of lots of employees opening their own personal accounts and, and, and using, using those. Um, ensuring that any text output of a model that is used by the business uh, in a document or in marketing literature is, is, is vetted uh, and, and, and checked and, and, if necessary, flagged as being the output of a, of a large language model. Um, and for image outputs, uh, the safest approach would probably be either not to use the image 
in a, at least in a high profile public facing campaign at all, um, but at least establish a careful process to ensure that you get the appropriate service terms from the model provider um, and that certain steps are taken once the image has been obtained to increase the, the possibility that it is protected as a copyright work. And we see this as an area where, at least at the outset, legal may have to get quite, quite closely involved. And we'd suggest thinking about supplier risks in the same way as employee risks as well. So for some kinds of suppliers, uh, you'll want similar protections in your contracts with them. Um, as, a, as a shown here, if you're lucky enough to have a supplier, uh, a supplier policy, um, it may be that you can introduce um, those into the supplier policy, uh, which will then get um, enforced as a contractual term um, around, around the back door. And perhaps the most important point, um, educating employees is going to be key. So think of, a, think of this a little bit like cybersecurity risk. Um, there's going to be a piece of work of just educating um, and making sure people uh, understand um, the, risks, the risks involved. So no doubt you know, these positions will evolve over time, but kind of six months into generative AI, and, uh, and uh, this, is, this is kind of where we've got to in terms of, in terms of risk, risk control.